At school, Chet complains that Belinda Conrad doesn't want to go out with him. Chet, that's a good thing. Her brother is awful. VJ Patel shows up in a pizza delivery disguise, and he gives the Hardys their newest mission. Because that's how ATAC tries to avoid attention. They have their tech guy call for the Hardys in a public cafeteria. That's almost as bad of an idea as hiding the CD inside a pizza. Argle Funk Book Review, Argle Funk Book Review. The Hardys are going to Camp Wilderness in Maine, where teenage criminals are forced to do heavy exercise all day long. Zach McGuire, one of the inmates, died at the camp recently. The Hardys need to see if his death was an accident or murder. Gee, too bad the police have no connection to jails whatsoever, otherwise they'd be able to solve the mystery themselves. Frank and Joe figure out their undercover personas. Frank is bad boy Steve Nimi, while Joe is out of shape wimp Brian Moya. It's fun to see Joe pretend he doesn't know anything about exercise, but let's be honest, both the Hardys are buff sports players. Heck, the book even starts with one of them going down a double diamond ski slope. There's no way that one of them can pass for someone who's never worked out before. The camp is run by Link Saunders, a buff guy who has an endless list of rules for everyone to follow. The Hardys are assigned to the victim's cabin, which is under the supervision of Will Smiley. We meet the other guys. James is the angry one, who's afraid he'll get sent to real jail if someone screws up. Andrew is the peacemaker. Russell starts a fight with Joe to prove he's the meanest guy in the cabin. The final guy is Ken. Ken was in a love triangle with the victim and Janet Russo, the hottest girl in camp. Yep, even in prison, the Hardy Boys meet babes. There's a big hike where Saunders gives a speech about the victim's death. He blames everyone in the bunk for the death, because they let the victim slack off. They should have been good team members and made sure he stayed in shape. Uh, I agree, it's good to look out for your friend's health, but that's not the same as murder, Saunders. Joe purposely fails the mountain hike, and Saunders forces the camp to do the hike a second time. Even Smiley has to participate. James and the others get revenge on Joe by dragging him into the woods and beating him up. This is for making us do another hike! This is for making the head counselor mad at us! This is for canceling the original Hardy Boys series! This is for all your failed attempts to pander to modern kids! This is for changing Aunt Gertrude's name! Stupid Undercover Brothers series! Frank goes to Saunders and blames him for Joe getting beat up, since unfounded accusations seem to be a major part of the camp. Saunders is shocked. When I said you should motivate him, I meant you should give him compliments, not beat him to death! Saunders holds Smiley responsible for the situation. The culprit knocks Frank out, locks him in a boathouse, then sets it on fire. Just like Nancy Drew, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Janet sends Joe a secret message, asking him to meet her at the latrines. She starts crying over the victim's death, and Joe gets super confused because that's not how he thought the love triangle was set up. In his defense, Joe doesn't know what to do around crying girls. Janet and Joe notice the boathouse is on fire. They try to break the windows and put out the fire, but it's no use. They can't get inside and save Frank. The book switches to Frank, who falls unconscious, and wakes up in the medical tent. Looks like Janet and Joe managed to save him after all. How? Beats me. The book never explains. One chapter we're told Frank's death is inevitable, then we skip ahead to when he's saved without a single sentence to describe how he was rescued. Thanks, book. The rest of the chapter is hilarious. Uh, Frank is high on painkillers, and he says a bunch of silly things. One of the things he talks about is his huge crush on Nancy Drew. Russell is an arsonist, so he gets arrested for the boathouse murder attempt. Normally, the case would end here, with someone being arrested, but Frank and Joe decide to hang around in the torturous camp for a while longer, because reasons. The team prepares for a whitewater rafting challenge. Joe almost dies when the culprit sabotages his canoe and his life vest. For a while, James looks guilty because he's got a knife, but then he cuts a deal with Joe. He will help destroy the love triangle to make Ken incredibly mad because pushing a potential murderer past the breaking point is a smart idea in Joe's book. At midnight, Joe is kidnapped. Frank suddenly solves the entire mystery. 
So he pulls out his micro tape recorder, which has never been mentioned until just now, and confronts the culprit. The culprit is Smiley. He killed the victim, and he plans to kill Joe, because they're bringing down the team. In a legitimate plot twist, Smiley is revealed to be Saunders' son. Kind of amazing Frank figured this out in a week, when Saunders hasn't figured it out after months. Smiley wanted to prove his worth as a camp counselor before telling Saunders they're related. He was so obsessed with proving his team's worth, he was willing to kill to get first place. Saunders is horrified at how far his son is willing to go, Smiley is arrested, and we end with the Hardy Boys playing basketball for some reason. The end. Post-book follow-up. The plot twist of Smiley being Saunders' son is well done. It's also cute, because at the start of the book, Joe interrupts when Frank talks about genetics, saying genetics is useless information that will never come in handy. The thing that stands out about this book, for me, is the quality of the writing. This is an above-average author, and it's interesting to read, even when the scene is something banal, like Frank and Joe lie to Aunt Trudy for the seventh book in a row. If I was the editor of this series, I would definitely want this author to write another book. I would give this book a perfect score, but I don't like the explanation for how Frank escaped a locked, burning building because there was no explanation for that at all. That's a pretty major detail to omit. So I take off a point for that, giving Hardy Boys Undercover Brothers number 7, Operation Survival, a 9 out of 10.